Hello, and welcome to Panda X. I am your host, Panda. This podcast series um, basically is about my previous adventures and experiences being a Mormon. I am currently an ex-Mormon. I go by Panda everywhere. Well, SH Panda 89 technically is my gamer tag, and I like to go by that um, as many places as possible, you know, social media wise. But anyway, this particular episode from this series is going to be a mini episode, meaning that I'm going to be speaking about this topic for eh, 10 minutes or less, something like that. It's going to be very short, definitely different from the main series that I will continue with, but I, I had to bring this up because this was very, very interesting to me. Okay. So uh, my title, my, my, my title, but why, why <laughs> apparently just re- um, let's say the six, I think two days ago on the f- fourth, maybe the, I, I don't know. It was sometime during the first week of March, a group, I don't remember their name. <sighs> Whatever I, I'm shoddy on some of the like specifics of this news story, but I'll just tell you the basics because you can go research this yourself. Um, but anyway, there was a group who climbed the or hiked the mountain, which is the Y Mountain east of Provo. This is on BYU uh, territory. I'll, I'm gonna call it territory. I don't know why. Just whatever. And <laughs> this group decided to light the big ass Y in the mountain with um very vibrant colorful colors and i'm looking at the picture right here colorful colors that makes sense yeah uh red yellow green and blue and i guess that was to signify that the lgbtq plus there you go i think i got it all right uh, that community is there and they you know their support there at byu for um individuals who are not necessarily just heteros or just not heterosexual but they're everything else but heterosexual okay so why am i bringing this up as a mini episode why am i talking about this why 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 (laughs) um okay a few reasons one i just want to say congrats to those people who did that um it may be rebellious according to the school because it's technically school property and you're I, i guess the um the lighting of the Y, uh, they have to give permission in order to do that. So obviously this was not permissible, and I, there's been responses saying, "Oh, we don't condone this behavior. We're going to make sure that people understand that this is not the right way to go about this." Yeah, all that stupid shit, all that stupid jargon, whatever. I personally think you did a great job. Um, it shows solidarity. Oh, I can barely speak. Excuse me. It shows, you know, community. I'm sure there's plenty of straight people over at BYU and BYU-Idaho who are like, yeah, I have nothing against non-heterosexual people. They're just people. They're just like you and me. Just like, you guys, we're all the same. We are all human beings. We all make mistakes. We're all imperfect. You know, we have our different um, attributes about us, which make us unique, right? And personally sexuality shouldn't come into question where you go to school or how you're treated etc etc you you know all that crap i'm all for it all right that was the first thing i wanted to bring up i'm all for this great job it looks like a cool why otherwise when it's just like with white lights it's kind of like bland that's just my opinion but more importantly the reason why i'm talking about this is for my second point on this topic this subject even though this was a great thing to have happened now, apparently um, it was for an anniversary of a letter sent out last year in 2020 in March, um, with which dealt with um, the specifics of the of BYU's stance on basically how they feel towards the LGG, LGBTQ. God, that's so hard to remember. <laughs> Basically, it's their stance against any romantic relationship that is not between a heterosexual couple. Holy crap, that took a lot. Ugh. Anyway, here's just what I want to get out real quick for a couple more minutes. Again, this was a great thing to have happen, but 
I just want you to understand, and this is, I guess this is more towards the non-heterosexual individuals and community that is a, still a part of the Mormon church. I just want you to understand that even though this was a great thing and you, you know, you sh- shook their boots or whatever, whatever term you want to say, you, you made them aware of your presence, even though you did all of that successfully, I just want you to know <laughs> That, uh, according to my own research, and you can do this on your own time, I personally feel that the church will never completely accept you for who you are. They just won't. There are several reasons why I say this. I can't go into all of them right now because then it would turn into an actual episode and I'm just, I had another subject ready for this week. I'm sorry, but I'll just give you just kind of a rundown of why I say that. Okay. First and foremost, the church just like any other institution on earth, is not perfect. They may tell you that they strive for perfection. They may tell you that you have to repent of your sins. You have to be better. You have to change. You have to grow, evolve from who you are. They may do that, but they themselves, and when I say the church, I mean, you know, the the higher-ups, the authorities, the authority, yeah, authority figures, authorities, whatever. They refuse to do so. They will be stuck in their ways for many, many years to come. This whole process of the church being stuck in its ways is still, even till this day, um, very strong. It hasn't really budged a lot, and it has adapted a little bit to the newer generation because we're seeing more millennials and more Gen Z, I think it's Gen Z, um, individuals uh, being a part of the church, and they're shaping it. They, they are, yes, they are making an impact on how the church views non-heterosexual individuals, but there's still that... Okay, the best way I can explain it, the best way, and this is going to sound terrible, but it's just the best way I can explain it right now. You know, in the Deep South, that racism is still rampant. There's still plenty of farmers, -farmers, non-farmers, I don't know if there's plantation owners, there probably are plantation owners, but there's still plenty of racism in the Deep South, in the Southeast uh, region of, you know, this continent. There's, there's so much racism over there. It's it's insane. But no one really talks about it. Well, it's kind of the same thing with the church. There, <laughs> there is an unspoken animosity and disgust for anyone who is not heterosexual that it's, it's toxic. Super toxic. So much so that they will do all that they can in their power to make you feel welcome on the outside... But on the inside, they're just completely lying to you. They are freaking lying to you. And I have one clear-cut example of where this made me uncomfortable personally. Actually, two times. I'll give you two times real quick, and then I'll end. Um, two, Two times in my life where I was very uncomfortable with the church's stance on non-heterosexual individuals. The first... Uh, was in the, I want to say mid 2000s or late 2000s when there was a, some type of prop going around trying to ban gay, um, marriage. And let me tell you, the church went to town on that. They were saying, Oh, it's an attack on merit on the sanctity of marriage. It's, it was, it's given to us by God. We can't taint it with same-sex marriage. That's not right. That's not what's in the Bible or in the Book of Mormon. It's wrong. It's immoral. Stop it. Don't let it pass. I think it was no on the prop. I Whatever. I can't remember the stances. I just remember that there were so many different classes during sun, um, Sunday worship. During that three-block hour. Holy crap. That was so stupid, by the way. But anyway, there was just so many... So many classes and so many reasons to make sure that same-sex couples don't get married. And I was just over here thinking, and I, okay, I was um, I was at least in my 20s. Yeah, I was definitely in my 20s. And I was here thinking, I, I think, whatever, I was a young adult. I was thinking that, dude, this is bullshit. Who cares? Really? It's just, if they want to get married and feel miserable, just like heterosexual couples go for it. Because honestly, marriage to me, to me, and I don't, you know, again, I got to be careful how I choose my words because I know people get offended. Marriage to me is more than just a piece of paper. But this prop, I feel anyway, was symbolic in allowing same-sex couples to receive the same 
piece of paper and the same rights and freedoms that heterosexual married couples enjoy. So it's like, why not? There's nothing wrong with that. What the hell? Anyway, that was one instance where I felt uncomfortable. The second instance, I think this was going to hit home a little bit harder to those of you who are still in the church who happen to be uh, part of the, this community. Um, it was after my mission. I was still a part of the singles ward. This was definitely in my mid-20s. And I went to some type of conference, some type of special meeting with, uh, I believe it was a whole bunch of different young single adult wards, or at least two or three, that we were congregating at the stake center. And I remember, I I just remember thinking to myself, okay, I'm in my mid-20s. I'm seeing people who are 19, 18, 45, possibly 50 and higher there. That's kind of strange. Okay, fine. But the topic of homosexuality came up, and there was a question asked by somebody. I can't remember who asked it, but, and, and this is paraphrasing, they basically asked the speaker, because we were on the topic of sexu- sexuality, they were asking the speaker, well, what if you can never find somebody to marry? Like, well, you know, what, what if you're single forever? What, what if you have these tendencies, but you can't act upon because it's against church policy it's against church i shouldn't say policy but it's against church teachings to act upon your homosexual tendencies that that was the basically the question you know what happens to those people who die and never get married and the (laughs) the response basically was well god gives opportunity and rewards all of those who abide by the church teachings their entire life so all the blessings that heterosexual people are receiving here and now will be given to you after you die when i heard that i thought well then what's the point of this life that that very much contradicts the plan of salvation because the plan of salvation and i'm not going to get into this i'm already over my time i'm going to end pretty soon the plan of salvation people is basically also known as the plan of happiness to me if you can't be happy on here on earth then what's the point what's the point of being here anyway that's all i got for this little mini episode thank you all so much for listening and um until next time i am panda this is panda x and i'll see you in the next episode bye